son. And of course, the, the, uh, the I'm going to say I got it, I guess. Um, and so all the screaming, the coach in me came out, but uh, we had it. We had a great day yesterday. So I do apologize about my voice and also my message this morning. But yes, I just want to say what a privilege and an honor it is to be with you guys, um, parents, young competitor, uh, the future of our rodeo and livestock industry. Uh, it's a true blessing and very close to my heart. Um, I uh, grew up in a very similar situation. I'm, I'm doing some unique things today, uh, but that's just truly from submitting and surrendering to my relationship with the Lord. So um, if it's okay with everybody, I'd like to open up in a quick prayer. And then um, Ms. Camry, if I get somewhere where you want to chime in, just certainly chime in, okay? All right, sounds good. Let's uh, bow our heads and fold our hands. Absolutely. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to share your love and, and the things that you've done in our life and our ministry with others, Lord, as a testament to your goodness, to your mercy. And Father, no matter who's listening or how we hear tonight, Lord, just let us have ears to hear and hearts to receive those things that can glorify you and make us better uh, by design, Lord, the way you created us, Lord. So thank you for this honor. I pray for every family. I know there's tough times and challenging situations in front of us to live our dreams, Lord God, but you gave us those dreams. And so we want to fulfill that with your help and your grace. So we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Well, I'm uh, really excited. Yeah, uh, my name is Scott Mendes. For some of you that uh, don't know the older guys in the in the business, but um, yeah, I just wanted to connect with you guys tonight. I know we've got uh, maybe 30 or 40 minutes. I'd love to uh, entertain your questions uh, and answer them the best I can. Um, yeah, my life is was pretty interesting. I'll just share a little bit of my testimony. I was born on July 4th in 1969. Old guy, <laughs> for sure. But uh, I was born in Visalia, California. And uh, my grandfather on my father's side Everybody on the, the Mendes side of my family uh, have rodeoed. And so I'd be like the third generation of rodeo cowboys on my father's side. Keep in mind on my mother's side, uh, there's a legacy and a history of preachers and ministers. In fact, my mother was a pastor's daughter. And so I kind of grew up knowing about the Lord, but there was a divorce. So when I was about four or five years old, my mother was from Fort Worth, Texas, and my dad was from the West Coast. And so I literally had my heart just ripped down the middle. They were both alive. I, I wasn't missing one, or I did not, maybe not know who my parents were. I knew who they were. Um, I never saw them together, but just one day for five minutes in my complete life. And I just want to say that as, you know, it's not God's very best. Some of you listening maybe have gone through divorce or seen your parents. Uh, and so I want to relate to you guys on that. I know it's a struggle when we maybe have blended families and brothers and sisters, and we kind of quarrel and bicker because, you know, hey, they're not our blood sisters or brothers and all those type of things. So I kind of grew up with that. In fact, my younger brother, uh, we have the same mother and different, uh, same father and different mothers. My younger brother, Tony, was very successful in rodeo as well, a, a very strong competitive bull rider you may watch some videos and, and learn of him so tony i don't always have a lot of time to talk about him but he was my younger brother i think by eight years but i also had an older brother that raised me when i was with my mother and that's my brother mike and uh, we really had some tough times my my mother had some issues and um, we moved around a lot i had several stepfathers so you could understand that i really truly didn't know what the call of God was on my life. Um, the, the blessing about that though, young guys and women, I wanna tell you is that my mother loved the Lord and I had a praying grandmother. And so my mom, during some of those challenges in our upbringing childhood, she would leave me with my grandmother. And my grandmother is really the one that was responsible for teaching me God's word. And she even told me, Scott, someday you will do great things, great mighty things for the Lord if you put him first. Well, as a young child and all my insecurities, you know, that sounds really well, but
But as I became, uh, continued to compete in rodeo and about junior high and high school, uh, some of the things that I got involved with were a little bit different. And so I always sensed God's hand on my life. Uh, but there was a lot of times in junior high and high school that I didn't understand that. And so I had a lot of pressure and I would uh, attribute most of that pressure to wanting to excel in rodeo to prove myself uh, that I could come from a dysfunctional upbringing and not having a lot of resources and, and doing great things because I watched movies uh, in Texas. I grew up with the Dallas Cowboys. I know they were very, very popular back in that time and America's team. And so Sunday afternoon would come along. My grandmother would make us a lunch. We'd pray, play football. And I really had that as the first ambition in life that I wanted to do. But when I was with my father, there was nothing about football. It was all working on the ranch. And um, I asked him to play football. And of course, he said, no, he needed me to work on the ranch. So I really would have maybe chose playing football if I could have. But sometimes the, the dreams and things that you have in your heart pick you. So when my dad said that he needed me to work on the ranch, we had a feed store and the livestock um, companies and different things that we would do. Uh, working on the ranch, he needed my help, so I couldn't go to school an hour early and lift weights. So, but he did say one thing. He said, "You know, I used to ride bulls. I'll help you a little bit, and I will let you off on the weekends to go to high school rodeos and so forth." And so, I took advantage of that opportunity, and uh, I did exactly that. I rode some baby calves in California and won some little junior rodeos. My dad moved from California. He moved back over into. Uh, Reno, Nevada. And so I spent my junior high and my high school years pretty stable with my dad. And I really, really excelled uh, in bull riding. I got on some bareback courses. I love the team ropes, still do that today. Uh, but bull riding just seemed to fit my personality of, you know, being strong willed and an independent guy. When you ride bulls, there's nobody to blame but yourself. And I like that aspect of of the rodeo business. So riding all those bulls and trying to prove myself around the world was an incredible journey. And I know many of you young people watching this today have dreams and ad admirations and things too. And so I wanna encourage you throughout the night that those dreams really are inspired and come from the Lord. And sometimes circumstances and issues in the world have a way of kind of weighing us down and mucking that out. And so to know who you are as a young person in Christ is one of the greatest privileges and honors that you will ever find. And whether you find that at, at 10 years old or 50 years old, it's very important that we find that. And so my identity was very shaky and it's not, rodeo is not a good sport to be in if you don't know who you are and maybe don't come from a very uh, structured family. And so having said all that, the day that I turned 18, I promised my dad I would graduate high school. I did that. I look, Looking back now, they told me that I had to have a 2.0 grade average in order to rodeo. I wish they would have said I needed a 4.0 because I did only what I needed to do in my education as a dreamer looking out the window and watching Lane Frost bull riding tapes and you know just being around that lifestyle. It started to become very clear that that, that I wanted to use bull riding as a, as a, as a mechanism to live and achieve my dreams. And so uh, if you have those dreams, keep them, hold on to them. And uh, hopefully some of the things I share tonight or your questions, I'd be able to help you in some of those challenges that I had with a dysfunctional upbringing and also reaching the pinnacle of my dreams of becoming a world champion. Uh, the first part of my national finals career, I went five times to the NFR in the 90s. I was a founder to the PBR. I did go to two of their world finals. Uh, there were some things that I had to do as an athlete when I was in the PBR that, that becoming a new Christian around the middle of my career. Uh, in 1994, there was a defining season and situations, and I'll tell you briefly about that so that we can move on. But, you know, I lived my whole life thinking that if I could have accomplishments or do great things that people would receive me and it would make a better person out of me. And so I think most of my time trying to prove myself was both to my earthly father because he was a hard cowboy. He didn't have a lot of affections. 
and anything about the Lord. I grew up in a sale barn in California. He had a, we had a horse sale and different things that we worked at. And so the guys that I was around were really shaping my life. And these were tough cowboys. I mean, fighting, cussing, drinking tobacco, all those kind of things. And so I thought as a child that I needed to be really, really tough. And although you need to be tough and not give up, we, we also need to know who we are in Christ. So I had the father figures and the men in my life on my dad's side. And then I had this little praying grandmother that said I would do great things with God. So those two worlds were substantially different. And, and I would have never been able to achieve or be successful in my life if it was never uh, uh, giving my heart to the Lord and allowing him to shape my identity and to understand principles and things that I needed to do to cooperate with God's will for my life. And so I pray that as you listen, I know I'm kind of rambling and I'm an older guy, but there's some very important things. And I just want to say this to, to grab your attention. The thing that God used as a defining moment in my life was when I watched my best friend killed on ESPN in the 10th go round of the national finals in 1994. My friend uh, was the rider right before me. We got down to the last four or five guys and it's usually the whole season is determined upon the final ride in the 10th go round. And remember, I wasn't really living my whole life for the Lord. I knew about the Lord in my, in my mind, but I had not surrendered my heart to him. And so I'm standing on the back of the buck and shoot the third year to the national finals. And I had a little bull that I'd never had. I, I loved my draw that day. And I was so excited that I was fixing to go out there and prove myself to the world and get my first world championship. But how many of you watching this know that God has, has sometimes a different plan or a different timetable in, in life for us? Because he's in, he's in heaven and he's eternal. He's not trapped by times. And so when we lived day to day on the clock and growing up in our high school and college years, uh, God is not trapped by that. And so I was trying to win a world championship. And that day I thought I had everything in my possession to do it. Rode really good, third time to the finals. It's time to win it, right? So as I was tying my glove on, my friend's bull came out and he was bucking right in front of my buck and shoot. And uh, as he was riding about six seconds, he got thrown off and it was a normal buck off. But the exception was he hung his foot in his rope. And so rather than the bull stepping close to him and bucking and going away from him, his foot in his rope slid his body over. And uh, again, I'm getting ready to ride and I'm looking at this. Uh, I'm just the next rider. And, and my friend's bull jumps in the air and comes down and lands on the side of my friend's head. And, and everybody in the Thomas and Mac knew that that was game over. We didn't wear helmets at that time. They were just a year away. We had um, Lane Frost was instrumental in the vest. Brent Thurman and other head injuries would come on. And so when you see you guys required to wear, wear, wear helmets, it is a wonderful thing. And that is something that you really need to, to learn to, to make sure you have. And I know you do through your organization. So anyway, my point is, is when I saw my friend killed, I remember back to one night as a, as a young boy, about eight or 10 years old, I was scared and I asked my grandmother, I said, grandmother, what happens to us when our life is over here on earth? The Bible is really deep and I didn't understand a lot of the things that she was teaching me, but I remember that she said this, she said, Scott, your life will be uh, evaluated from God when you're in his presence. And so when I watched my friend lay there lifeless on the arena floor, my question to myself was, if that was laying, that if I was laying there in his position, I would never have a chance to ride bulls again. My life would be over. And what would God say about my life as far as how I'd lived it to that point? And I want to just encourage you guys up to that point, I was very selfish and I was always trying to prove myself. And that got me into a lot of difficult situations. But when I realized if that was me laying there, and I wish I could because my friend was the golden guy, he had family, the whole city of Austin was behind him. And here I was, this guy just traveling from rodeo to rodeo. And when I saw my friend lay there, I, I, I didn't hear it in an audible voice, but I heard it in my heart. And I heard the Lord say, depart from me for I never knew you, which meant I would go to 
uh, 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 to hell or to a separation from the Lord rather than entering into heaven. And I don't want to get too deep with you young people, but if you're 10, 12, 15, or 18 watching this, I think you would understand how bad that scared me. And that defining moment uh, determined the rest of my life. I came out of that building. I bucked off my bull. I would ride the same bull a month later for 94 points and $10,000 in Phoenix, Arizona. But it was God's way of saying, you can get as close as you want in your hard work and your efforts. But the real blessings, God, is to live for me, and then I will bless your life, and I will help you to overcome all of these fears and insecurities and challenges that I would find myself in life. And that's why I wanted to share my testimony with you young people today, because my life before just knowing about the Lord in my head and never seeing that defining moment and giving him my heart and asking him to come into my life, it was radical transformation. I was partying. I was drinking, running around. I wasn't crazy. I was a business guy. I could get there, but it didn't matter. I knew that my heart was not totally surrendered to God. And I want to counsel you guys today to know that no matter what you're up against, uh, you don't have to wait for a defining moment. You can choose to love your mom and dad wherever they are. You can choose to have God as your heavenly father helping you every day if you will submit to him and he will help your goals and your dreams and aspirations to come to pass. So that defining moment shook me up. I ended up that year as a runner up. I walked out of that building and I promised God that I would serve him. I've met my wife at my friend's funeral. We've been married for 26 years now, three beautiful children. They all are different in personality, striving to do different things. We all ranch and rope together occasionally and all those things. And so being a, being a cowboy is going to be something that I always have in my heart, but I'm really feel led to encourage you guys to inspire your dreams and have visions to write them down and do, and then do whatever it would take uh, to be truthful to yourself and to God. And there's no way around getting, getting around God's principles. So the very first scripture I remember learning in my life was in Ephesians where it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, or this is right. And if you do this with long life, will I satisfy thee? And, and, it, and I, that defining moment made me realize that just like my friend, I died to my selfish ways in that arena. And I promised God, if a gold buckle never comes, it doesn't matter. I don't have to have that to serve you and to help other young kids that are wanting to be where I'm at today. And so that's why I'm so grateful that in all these years since my gold buckle, I went back in 1997 and God blessed me with that title. And I've been using that title as a rodeo chaplain, doing boat, uh, bull riding schools and working at rodeo Bible camps and being on Christian television, literally around the world, uh, producing cowboy films, all those type of things so that we can get the message out uh, to all of you young people that really uh, inspire to be where you want to go. But if you do it with the right uh, tools, just like the helmet and the vest, if you know who you are in Christ and you take advantage of what Christ has put in your life, you will speed up the process and, and, and you will be right in his hands and he's able to help you. And so for me, it was all about a condition of my heart. How do I put my mind and heart together, which is really the spirit or the soul, the mind, your will, and your emotions. Some people are very smart, but emotionally, they're very damaged. And if I would have went through life saying that I didn't have a very good start, I would have never made it. Uh, or I would have made it and been a very bad role model. And I would have never been able to give up drinking and partying and thinking that I was really somebody when I wasn't anybody. So it's all about building your family and your team around you as you set your goals in the new year and you go out and you practice and you work very hard on your education and being the kind of person that allows you to be granted scholarships and opportunities that the Lord truly wants to get into your life. So there's so much more. I'm not here to preach it, you guys. I, just, I feel my temperature rising, but I just think that that's the Lord speaking through me to you guys. So, um, you know, with that, as we do our camps and things, we do everything Christ-centered. Um, you know, developing character, renewing your mind, conquering fear, um, self-esteem, all these principles that we interject into our programs. We have a full-blown Christian bull riding league for young men. 
because I don't want to just tell them where not to go. I want to provide a place for them to go. And so that's exactly what uh, Camry is doing for you guys. She's really giving you a foundation that she can, that you guys can launch yourself into whatever it is that you want to do. And most important, that's loving people, loving God, standing up for your country and, and doing it with purpose rather than just following the crowd and peer pressure and bullying and anger and, 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 and all those type of things. So, so if anybody, if God can use me, an old bull rider, he can use any one of you that are watching this program tonight. So I yeah. give him all the glory for everything that I've ever done or will do in the future. And what I want to do is help you guys. Yeah. Let's, um, if, and if somebody wants to, if you want to raise your hand in the little reactions and, um, if somebody wants to share with us, you know, just something that they face, like some kind of adversity, um, that they struggle with, or if you want to type it in the chat, I know that every single one of you has some sort of adversity, whether it's peer pressure, whether it's social media, whether it's pressure from your parents, whether it's no matter what it is, Share some of that stuff. Uh, if somebody will share that with us and if somebody will speak up, that would be awesome. And otherwise put it in the chat. One thing that you struggle with. I know everybody's got something. And hey, then we can go ahead, Scott. No, no, I was saying it looks like we've got a pretty good audience here tonight and we're going to reshare this as well. And so there we go. We've got some questions. Yeah, we've got staying positive. Cheney Bronson. Bronson, you have your hand up. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, uh, I struggle with school, with math and school. With math and school. You're, you're struggling a little bit with that, you said? Is that was a, well, that's a question? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, I, what was that? Yeah, he said he was struggling with school, math and school. Yeah. Well, I want to encourage you, you know, when I was in school, I was in school, but in my mind and my thoughts, I was riding bulls at the junior and high school rodeos, and I just couldn't wait to get out of there. I didn't really think that, that math was important for me to have. However, when you rodeo, you know, you have to have a bank account, you have to pay for fuel and hotels and groceries and all those type of things that you'll need. And so if you can learn right now to put your true focus and attention into that classroom, knowing that that will help you to do the things you want to when you graduate, it, it'll make a difference. So you have to put your mind on what you're learning as valuable to where you want to go in your life. So maybe that'll help you and, you know, get good rest, eat good breakfast. All of these things really uh, matter in our life. When I was 18, I had, I had struggles. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating right. And I went through some very devastating things at 18. We didn't talk about them a lot right here, but we're making movies and documentaries that will come out. And I pray that you guys will see that someday, but it's important to get what you need in order to have what you want. Yeah, yeah. that's... Go ahead. All right, we have anxiety, anxiety before runs, anxiety before competing. And I'm sure that's something as a bull rider getting down in the chute for all that money and everything, you've had plenty of experience with that. How does one handle that kind of pressure and have the trust and faith in God to protect him during those runs? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the difference between guys that ride really good and go to the national finals and guys that have gold buckles is that when you're in that last round and you have to ride a bull or you have to rope a calf, whatever it is, you have to not knock a barrel over, the thought of what you don't have to do becomes greater. And the mind, the subconscious mind is what we're reacting to in our event. And that's why we practice to get the muscle memory and the focus to put ourselves in that winning run through visualization. And it's not through all just positive thinking, God gave you a brain and he, he, he knows how, to, uh, how you can control your thoughts. And so sometimes positive thinking just makes us a little bit head haughty, if that makes sense, a little prideful. But God's word is very important and, and he wants us to overcome our anxieties and our fears by looking back at our past victories. Uh, I could be at Cheyenne, when in the Cheyenne Frontier days, and all I knew that perfect love, which is a scripture, cast out fear. 
And so I would have the greatest bull and I would have the crowd behind me. And I knew I just needed to make a great ride. And I'm thinking in my mind that this bull is no different than the bull that I rode at a practice pen somewhere. And in my mind, it was just me and that bull focusing on that event or task at hand. And so you don't want to let your fears or anxiety override the joy of being able to do what you love to do and let the times, let the judging fall with the judges and the stopwatch. You compete at your very high level in your heart knowing that you practice really hard, you just really go blank, and then you react to do what you've already done and practice well. Yeah, I love that. I think that that kind of goes in a theme that that I'm reading in the chat here is that there's there's peer pressure, there's social anxiety of worrying what other people think, there's conflicts between what friends are saying that they're doing and what their coaches or people that they feel are more experienced are saying. How do we handle that? The back and forth on that, the the confusion, the who are we supposed to please? Yes, absolutely. And that's why I really am so blessed to share my, my personal testimony with you, the pieces of it. Uh, again, when you become complete in your own heart and you're doing something that you love, a lot of the kids that come to my bull riding schools throughout the years, some of them are doing it for the wrong reasons out of fear or you know, maybe parents want them to, but they haven't really settled that issue in their heart. And it does create anxieties. One, rodeo, you're dealing with animals and, and livestock, and it's a very dangerous sport. So if you don't rest well and take care of your nutrition, you know, you can get injured doing it. And so it makes more pressure on us as an athlete to know if anything happens, you know that you've practiced and given it your all. But, but the anxiety is eliminated, at least for me in my career, when I came at peace in my heart, and I knew without a doubt I wanted to do this. I'm doing it for the right reasons. And I know that God will bless this if I honor him and do it with a pure heart. And so a lot of times the anxiety about other, other things that people are putting on you, you have no business allowing that on your own life. And so you have to really stay focused on, I'm doing this because I love it. I will get better at it. And then make sure that you're competing at your level I know in the rough stock, we want to go to the national finals, but we have to ride our, our stock and compete at our own ages. So when you're in junior high and high school, there's a lot of other kids that are just like you. Don't look to the, to the best kid who seems to have the fancy trailers, the quicker horses. Mom and dad can afford those type of things. You take your horse. You love your horse. You develop a relationship and you work at your level. And I promise you, God will just be with you every step of the way, but don't compete against others. Compete against your own heart, and that will help you. I believe that will help you when, uh, free you up from not bringing in all the negative. But the negative thoughts will produce negative things in your life. You do want to stay positive, and so I hope I hope that helps you. And I have many scriptures that I could share, you know, on those type of things. But I don't want to get real lengthy tonight. Just know that. Um, there are scriptures in the Bible. For instance, God said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So uh, don't, don't compete with other people. That was the first thing I realized. If it took me 100 years to go get my dreams, uh, there's some guys that have other opportunities and, and I'm going to compete against them. But I knew on that championship round in Cheyenne, Pendleton, Madison Square Garden, or at the NFR, I, I was going to I was going to ride one more bull than somebody and I would be a world champion or whatever the scenario may be for you. So don't look at other people that creates anxiety, compete at your level and give it all your heart, not some of it, but all of your heart. Everything you do should make you go closer to your goals. And that's, that's getting along with people, getting good grades, trusting that, that your time will come. Yes, I love that as well. Parley Parker, can you share with us your question in the chat? Yeah, um, I was just wondering how when you were growing up, you handled going back and forth with your parents and practicing. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you for that question. 
Um, you know, it was difficult. I'm not going to lie to you. And I think that's kind of, you know, it all kind of came to a head for me when I was at the high school. See, I went, I won state two times in Nevada in the bull riding. I went to the high school finals three times. So that's what I was saying, where you guys are going to be going. I've been there. But, you know, I, I think a lot of it just goes back to, you know, again, just trusting God. I could never do anything on my own. And any time that I thought I was by myself or woe is me, I'm the only one that comes from a divorced family or, you know, I had a hard time getting along with my stepmother. Once I put forth the effort to slow down and to try to love the people around me, it was just a principle. God blessed me and would help me. So just know you're not the only one going through it and, and that uh, you, you need to put forth the effort in your practicing and, and, and so forth. So I, I hope that's kind of answering your question. I just want to make sure you know you're not the only one going through it and it is very difficult, but do it with a whole, um, you know, do this, pray to God and ask God to help you through that struggle that you're in at that time. Because I know that God will hear your prayers, and I know that God can help you. I don't know the whole scenario, but divorce is very, very hard. And, and moms and dad, I realized that even though my mom and dad couldn't live together, for whatever reason, they divorced when I was very young, and I always longed to have a good family. I didn't have one. And so when I was in Texas, I was a, 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 a preacher, you know, had preachers in my life. When I was in California, Nevada, I had rodeo guys in my life. So wouldn't it be awesome that today I, I work in rodeo ministry. It's it just, God has a way of putting things together and healing over time. So continue to do all that you can do. Love your mom and dad, wherever they are, and work hard on your practicing. And I promise people, grownups will step in and God will send a miracle to your life to help you. So don't give up. Lacey Johnson, you are firing some questions over there. Let's hear what you have to ask. Um, I'm wondering how like your childhood life affects like your life now and how you handle your family life like now. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that question. Um, I wouldn't be able to answer it without giving you the scripture that God gave me to help me to change my life. And I'm going to quote it to you. You can jot it down and just go look at it yourself in your Bible. But Romans 2, uh, Romans 12 and verse 2 says this it says do not be conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may test and prove what is that perfect and pleasing will of God see for me the devil tricked me when he knew that he couldn't stop me from rodeo and the next thing he told me was nobody's going to listen to you until you are a world champion and so I had this big heavy burden of pride and anger and idolatry and all these things that you know we we get i know that's a big word but it just meant that i wanted a world championship more than anything and i missed so much of my life on that journey but the reason i quoted that scripture is because the day that i began to put my relationship with god first all my performance in the arena would get better and i would begin to try to study those scriptures that would help my life and so it never really changed for me until I put my mind, I would put down the pro rodeo sports news and I would start reading the scripture and things just became more at peace in my life. Once I knew who I was as a child of God, that God loved me no matter what my start was in life. So I want to encourage you, uh, my, my, the things that I do today are because I put God number one in my life above gold buckles, above even my wife. Because if I don't have a relationship with God, I can't be a good husband or a father. And I think too many times the enemy or the devil, whatever you've heard him called in your life, he is coming to steal and kill. And the thoughts that come from him and the world in my heart will put me in a place of bondage and immobilize me from going forward. So if I wanted to go forward with God and be a true champion, it didn't matter if I had a gold buckle or not. When I saw my friend laying there lifeless, you know, I knew if that was me, I, I could never compete again. And so I always wanted to do it with the right heart and the right motive. And God blessed that. And I had to pray with him. I had to leave relationships and friends and, and popular groups, even though I was one of the top writers. 
I, I wouldn't compromise myself even back in the you know the big bull riding league they would tell me I would have to have endorsements of alcohol and whiskey and I said no and eventually I would just have to leave from that organization and leave a whole lot of money and I wanted to be in those organizations and so I I, I didn't compromise what I knew to be truthful and I just kept my mind on God and oh. he helped me it wasn't about me anymore it was about trusting God I hope that helps yeah, I think, um, you know, just to kind of bounce off that, there is a lot of truth to that. And I want to kind of hit on the idolatry and like having idols and and wanting to be a world champion. How many of you guys want to win? Everybody here wants to win, right? And it can be so easy to get caught up in that. Like even for me with rodeo kids, um, with all of you, the pony pros, everything, there are times that I have struggled, just like Scott has said, with saying, well, I haven't won enough. I, I don't have fancy enough horses. I don't have a nice enough this to encourage you guys. Um, but as I have prayed about it and I have stayed true to when I pray and I'm feeling sorry for myself and I feel bad and I'm like, gosh, like, I don't know if I'm fit for this. He always says, keep going, keep going. And it has just grown. It has grown to where all of you guys are here. We started with four kids two years ago. We had 15 kids last year and this year we have all of you. So it's not so much about the things that you've accomplished in life, even though you get to go keep doing that. Just like Scott said, you know, when he opened it up, he still got to be a world champion, but he got to do it on God's terms instead of on his own. And so that opened way more doors than if you just would have been a world champion. And it kind of goes into like people who talk about, um, I don't think I've shared it this year with you guys yet, but there's a video of a guy who uh, he found out that he was in the running to be the valedictorian of his college class. And so he studied and he studied and he studied and he worked and he worked and he set aside everything. And when he got there, he said that he got the award and for 15 seconds, it was awesome. It was great. You know, he was on top of it. Everything that he had worked to accomplish, he got it. And in the 16th second, all he had was an award. It was over. You know, he'd, he'd sacrificed all the solid relationships in his life. He hadn't gone and built better relationships with his friends or with his family or with his faith. He was so focused on being the valedictorian that he missed out on all of that. And in the 16th second, he was just another guy who had an award. And so I think it's really important to what Scott's saying, you know, is to not be so focused on just winning the award that we get, we forget who we are as people and what our purpose is beyond that. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. We just had another question. Who is the Colton? Did you have a question? You had your hand up. Who else has some questions? No, no, I did not have a question. I okay. didn't That's all right. Who else so, has something that they're that they're struggling with or that they would like to ask God? I know we had some more people. Riley, you had a question in here. Riley Smith. Yeah, me and Payne both had questions. Um, but my question was, where do you put on your bull riding and Bible uh camps or clinics or those yeah th thanks riley that's a good question we have a facility here at our home in weatherford we do some here but most of my camps are throughout the nation uh so people will call me and they'll either uh be putting on just a bull riding clinic and i can go and instruct that but a few years back the rodeo bible camps became very popular so i go and i instruct the bull riding but they also allow me to oversee as a chaplain. And so that means during all the chapel services, I bring a short devotion and a message. And then of course, the campers and rodeo contestants will break up uh, with their staff members at bedtime and things like that and, and interact with other volunteers throughout the camp. These are these are really good. And I know Ms. Uh, Camry may, may be wanting to put one of these on. I told her I would help her do anything that's needed uh, to get to you guys to provide some life lessons and some skills in the arena uh, so that you can be taught by champions that aren't only just champions, but guys that guys and girls that really love the Lord. There's some great role models out there today that are going mm -hmm. in our industry, but sometimes you have to look really hard and, and, and just follow their life. Um, again, you know, most people would say I was the most 
unlikely uh, to turn into a preacher or even to succeed. But today I've done a lot of great things and it is because I gave my heart to the Lord and he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And he is no respecter of a person. There's no anxiety or fear about who God is choosing to love. If you're watching this broadcast tonight and you're on this Zoom call, God loves you. He's getting something into your life. And, and don't just look at me or Camry or your parents. Look at God speaking to you and answering your prayers so that you can be a leader in your community and your rodeos because he loves you. And, and you can help a tough situation by just doing what he's called you to do. Mm -hmm. Cheney. I've had like trouble like with staying positive after like a good or bad, like a bad run. And now that I've started to read the Bible more often and I try and read it every day, it's helped me with um, not staying or staying more positive. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, also, and, and, and one of the reasons if we back up two questions ago about renewing your mind is that for everything that is you're unable to do in the world that is evil or bad for you, you have to remember where that came from. So if you think of it this way, the devil kind of is turned loose and he kind of owns some things in the world like media. That's why we work hard to produce good quality family uh uh, content for you guys to watch because that will inspire your dreams uh, but because he owns the media or he owns these people that may be in these peer groups that are bullying you got to remember that hurting people hurt people so some of the bullies in your school are just kids that really don't know in their heart and 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 have come into a situation where they're at peace they're going through stuff and so they want to take advantage and put pressure on you guys as, as just good people. And so the whole thing about renewing your mind is for everything that the, the enemy would want to get into your life through bad movies and bad platforms of social media, God also has platforms, but you're going to have to work really hard to find out what kind of music can I listen to? What should I be re reading? If, if you're always in a dark, bad place looking at content, that's going to fill your mind and your heart, and that's going to produce double-mindedness, which means you know you should be over here, but you're seeing this stuff, and you don't know what to do. That is where the enemy tries to get us, and that's why, for me, my, my biggest story about the championship, I could either do it God's way, or I could do it my way, and my day, my way was going to end up killing me, you know, but if I did it God's way, I still may get hurt. I know that he loves me. I'm no different than anybody else. We're all in this world together. So anyway, my point is you have to renew your mind by filling your heart, your mind with Christian movies, Christian music, Christian friends, people that are building you up, that love you for who you are and not what you can do for them as you get older. Okay. So always fill yourself up with positive and good things and reading the Bible will fill your heart with positive things in your life. It will change your life for sure. Tegan, you have a question. I have one little question for Mr. Scott. Um, if your parents were like, if y'all were fighting per se, what did you do to stop fighting and make peace with them? Well, I, I, uh, that's a great question. I kind of taught on that this morning in the book of James about, um, about that very thing, about sometimes the Bible says in James, when we're fighting about stuff, it's because we want our own way. And I think the greater person in any fight is the one that surrenders in love. That doesn't mean you're not going to get what you are fighting about. It's just that you don't want the conflict. And so some people are anger and anxiety. Other people are withdrawn and more complacent. And eventually that, that, that's going to show up in your life. But really, when I look back and I was 18 and I was persistent on my having my rodeos and, and living my dreams, I think all my parents wanted me to do was really slow down, get my education and do things right. And so as long as you're under your household and the authority of your mom and dad, you always have to submit to them. You submit to God, then your parents, and later down the road, it's going to be 
your spouse and the person that you'll spend your life with. But every step of the way, we're preparing ourselves so that we can handle those responsibilities. And so that's why we don't want to get ahead because when we do wrong things, it produces wrong outcomes and that causes a lot of pressure. So even if you know your mom and dad or you think that they may be wrong, you're going to be wrong by not obeying the Lord, by just submitting to them uh, the best you can. Now, if your parents are doing things that, you know, are illegal or things that are not right, you have to come forward with a teacher or a counselor, this Cami, whatever that may be. And I'm not saying that's happening to you in your life, but there's a lot of things that go on behind closed doors. So make sure that you get the help that God will send to you by asking for it. We have not because we ask not. I promise if you pray, I don't have the answers, but God's word, which is God himself and the Lord will intervene and come to help you over those matters. That's what adults should be protecting our children from and for. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. And Tegan, I just want to add to that too, that I think, um, you know, just in my experience, sometimes it's asking yourself why they're doing what they're doing and asking, is it for the benefit of me or is it to harm me? Because 90% of the time they have the best of intentions. And while we don't like it at first, if we really take a deep breath and sit back and look at it, we realize that even if we don't agree with it, they're doing it because they love us and they want to see us succeed. Maybe not in this instant, but it will produce results in the future. We can definitely get caught up sometimes in wanting instant results instead of wanting the long-term results. Cambry, you have a question. What is your favorite Bible verse and why is it so important to you? <laughs> Good question. Well, I, yeah, I knew that might come up. I, I love them all. Uh, Romans 12, 2 was the one that helped me to understand that it wasn't about me. And the more I renewed my mind to God's word, it changed my thoughts. Your, your thoughts lead to your actions. Your actions will lead to your, uh, the, the destiny of your life, like God's plan. And so um, I knew that when I renewed my mind to God's word, that that scripture would be with me forever. There, there's so many of them that I that I love in there. I remember one scripture, it may be on that little plaque behind my shoulder, when I first uh, became a Christian or got saved, you, you hear those terminologies. When I asked Jesus into my heart, the first scripture he gave me was Hebrews 10, 24. And it says, let us consider how we may love one another and spur each other on to good deeds. And so that was my first Bible scripture that I know that the Lord spoke to me in my heart. And that's what I do today. I want to spur you guys on to live for God, to not give up, and to know that God will supply whatever it is that you need uh, in your life. That could be natural resources or spiritual things, but we have to know how to ask for them. And he's never going to turn you away because he loves you, he created you, and he created your life with purpose. And when you find out what that purpose is, you're going to be at peace. And no matter how much bullying the world wants to put on you, it, you're going to shed it off because you're under the protection of God's love. All right. Riley, Riley Bevan. Um, hi. Uh, I was wondering how you knew, like, when it was, when it's, when you're overwhelming yourself, like you're trying to make everyone happy and trying to please everyone, or like you're just trying to help everyone, but how, how do you know it's too much or how do you know you need to start taking care of yourself more? Well, that's, that's, a really, that's a really good question. And I think if we start off our day and we read a devotion or hear a worship song, or we start our day off with the Lord, uh, it's kind of like doing a spiritual, not just a spiritual cleansing, but it's a time where the Lord can talk to you and you can hear him in your heart. And he may say some of the things that you're doing aren't, aren't important and you're allowing them to come into your life to hold you down. And so the God, uh, God can reveal those two to you, but you have to learn how to hear his voice. And as you analyze how much things, how many things you have on your life at that time, God will, just like the scripture says, he will prune off some of the dead works and the dead things or relationships or too much time watching 
uh, you know, media or the news. And he may say, hey, I want you to spend 30 minutes with me so that I can talk to you. Once you hear God's voice, then you can know that there's some things that you might have to let go of in order to go up. The biggest fight we have as children of God is to resist the things of the world and not allow all that stuff on us because we can't handle it all. So I encourage you to learn how to hear your father's voice in heaven. When he speaks to you, then we can be obedient to walk that out. And he may say, we need to spend more time with him or whatever strategy he may give you, he's going to help you. And you may already know it in our heart, but the word of God and God himself will confirm it to say, yeah, I, I think I need to go to bed earlier. I think I need to do this or do that or get involved in some good organizations that can help you to stay focused on only what you're responsible for. Don't, don't allow other people's problems to come a part of you. They really, my mom had a lot of problems and they were always trying to tell me I would have them because she was my mother. And I was like, I don't want them. They're not healthy. They're not good. So I would push back with God's help. Yeah. And Riley, I struggle with that too. You know, sometimes we, we want to please other people, but I think it goes back to what we talked about in the beginning as well. And that, um, you know, God's got a plan for us. And, you know, even in my life, I've had a lot of relationships that I still care about the people. I still love those people, but they aren't people that are serving the purpose that I have. And they're taking time and adding negative energy, just like the media does. And sometimes it is making those difficult decisions as to who we're surrounding ourselves with to we're letting that take away from our time where we can really serve other people and ourselves correctly and in a spiritual way. So sometimes it's difficult and it's not easy and you'll always have that battle going on from time to time, but just trust yourself and trust that the Lord's going to lead you in the right way. Okay, we have Bronson, you're next. We've just got time for a handful more questions. I don't know how much time you have, Scott, but these guys have some really good questions. When you yeah. were talking about the Bible camps, um, uh, Kyle Van Lanningham, he put he put a Bible camp and a bull riding camp with Jess Lockwood on up in Colorado. I think it was awesome. Wiggins, Wiggins, Colorado, I think. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Madison. How should I handle people at school when they are negative about me? Well, I saw that question come up, Madison. And, you know, the thing about, about people, I think I just said it a minute ago, you know, hurting people hurt people. And so the true friends are the ones that you have that maybe you, you know, you go over, you talk to them and you guys really hit it off. And then there's that popular crowd and the, the enemy, the devil knows that we want to have people look, look, you know, think highly of us and that we fit in and that we're popular and all those things. But sometimes the enemy can really uh, confuse that. And so I want, I want to, I want you guys all to understand that when you know who you are as a child of God, how much God loves you, how much he's willing to do for you to help you, then that helps you uh, as a person inside. And a lot of those people that don't have that commitment or relationship with the Lord they're just running around doing things that the world is telling them to do based off of Nickelodeon or whatever channels everybody's watching, MTV, all those things. And in the content and the streaming behind all those things, there are agendas and negativity things. And then sometimes people, if they don't know the Lord, they're just acting them out and causing problems in your life. And so I would say love them, uh, but don't engage with them. And, and, and don't allow their, their pressure to come on your life um, because bad things can happen. I tell my bull riding students all the time, it is hard to soar with the eagles when you're running with the turkeys. Does that make sense? Turkeys are big birds and they don't get around very good, right? They're on the ground just scrounging. But an eagle, he flies alone 30,000 feet above the clouds, above the earth. And that's what God created you to be. And we can't be it alone. So we first have God's help. We have our family, and if you don't have the appropriate family or means, I promise you, in faith, as you pray and step out, God will provide that rodeo camp or that mentor or that role model. Then you get around them and you do the things they're doing if they're healthy and they're God-fearing. In other words, uh, they're based on the Bible because those are the true role models that we need. 
in our life is people that truly understand uh, where we are, where we're going, and they can help you to do that. Once you know who you are and that you will go to heaven, it, it makes your life a lot better. Yeah. All right, Victoria, and then we have one question after that, and then we'll have to wrap it up just to be respectful of everybody's time. Absolutely. Okay, I was wondering how you deal with your like what ifs on life, like all your what ifs. Yeah, um, like what if this bull kills me? What if I miss the world championship? All those type of things. Yeah, you know, what ifs is basically, I would think that's kind of tied to fear. It's the unknown. Again, fear is false evidence appearing real. A lot of times the enemy will lie to you, whether that's through your friends or through books or different things. And if you allow that lie to get down in your heart, you know, it will produce. And so the what ifs are not what I live by. Um, I live by this little book right here. It's the life of Christ. And, and when I know that, that, that the Lord had already exemplified what life is like, he came to this earth. He was born as a baby in the flesh. He lived a life of persecution and people mocking him. And so when we look at Christ's life as an example, there's not a lot of unknowns. There's a lot more absolutes. I know that God loves me. I don't have to fit into this peer group. I know that God will help me if I ask him to help me. And so the what ifs are a lot more looking back. And if you notice in a car, the rear view mirror is only this big, but the windshield is really big. So God wants us moving forward. Two thirds of God's name is go. He wants us to go into all the world and share our testimonies and our stories with other because they will inspire us. The what ifs, we, we can't base our life off of that. That will always bring uh, uh, unstableness. And like the Bible says, the unwise man built his house on the sand, but the wise man built his house upon the rock, which is Christ and your relationship. So we all do it, but we should do it very quickly and keep moving forward. Because if we build a camp and hang out right there at that group, we're, we're going to be entitled. We're going to be victims. Uh, and we are called to be victorious in Christ. The world doesn't owe us anything but we can give our life to the world and make it a better place to live. And that's what leadership and ambassadors are all about. You guys are leaders and it's hard to be a leader in public school or out in the marketplace or at rodeos, but just be who you are and love others. But first you got to accept the love that God has for you as a child, where you're at right now. Yes. Okay. Adeline Rice. We have a mom question, which I think will be good for all of you guys to hear. One last mom question to wrap it up. Oh, no. The best for last. <laughs> Can you unmute yourself? I'm not sure where you're at. Um, okay. Maybe we don't have one more. So if I could do this, uh, Camry, I wanted to, to read two things real quick. They're just right in front of me. These are things that maybe when I mention them, that the young folks will be able to uh, think about them. Th th this is called the keys to life. There's only 10 of them, but these are the types of things that we need to focus on, not our popularity, what we don't have, what we wish we have, but, but just listen to these. These are things that are from the scripture but it's really short. I want to read this. The number one thing when you ask the Lord into your heart would be prayer. Prayer is power for life. Number two, self-esteem. It is the foundation for your life. If you know who you are, you're built your house on the rock, not the world and all that the world offers, right? Number three is change. Change is very difficult, but it is, it is a fact of life. We have to continually change uh, so that we can grow because what you're at right now is not going to be the same when you're 20 or you're 30. So you have to be willing to change. Desire. What is the deepest desires of your heart in your life? That is the motivation of life. And then vision. What is your vision for your life? That is the blueprint for your life. Faith is a force of life. Obviously, we could teach on all these, but I'm just giving you some points. Uh, discipline is the strength of life. Whether you're a Christian, whether you're in the world, it doesn't matter. Without discipline, your life is never going to have peace and structure. 
So if you learn discipline as a child when you're with your parents, that will help you to be a greater champion in your rodeo endeavors. How about truth? Truth that you know will set you free, but a lie will put you in bondage. So know what you're going to allow to get down in your heart. Giving is a source. Give of your time. There's younger people than you that look up to you. And how will you handle that in your life? And then, of course, your relationships are your network for life. So when you put all those together, there are stepping stones to your future. God calls your future your destiny. And the sooner you discover and are willing to allow him to lead your lives, your lives will have more of the fruit of the spirit, which is peace, love, joy. And no matter what you're up against, God knows everything about who you are and what you're going through. We can't put on a poker face with God. We may as well come clean and go to him. He's waiting to help you in every situation in your life. Those are awesome. We had those on our um, Facebook. We did a Facebook live for some of that stuff as well. So um, that is all great stuff. And thank you so much, Scott, for, for sharing that with us today. You can see in their eyes and, you know, as I scrolled through different people and, and watched, um, you know, watched all you guys, it was awesome to see, you know, how it was setting with you. And, um, so it's clear that this is a message that needed to be heard. And I, you know, we all take away stuff like from stuff like this, you know, I've had a couple different conversations with Scott now, and it's amazing he brought, God brought Scott into my life at a time that I needed it. You know, I've been, there's things that I struggle with as well. And he gave me a message, sent me a message on rodeo kids one day. And, and here we are two weeks later, and he's here to support us and rodeo kids and you and everything. So we're so thankful. And God brought him into this organization as well as us into his. Um, so we're really thankful for that and for taking the time and, I want to thank all of you kids who joined us, the ambassadors and the couple of parents that did. Um, thank you for being authentic and for being willing to ask questions and to put yourself out there. Some of the questions that you guys asked are difficult questions to ask, and you did it in front of your peers. And that's awesome. And I want you guys to be proud of yourself for doing that because it takes courage and you all have the courage to do that tonight. And even if you didn't say anything, that's okay. You're here, you're listening, you're absorbing and you're learning. And so that's just, I'm so proud of you for doing that. Um, and it's just awesome. So thank you guys. Thank you, Scott, so much. Is there anybody who would like to close in prayer? Anybody want to volunteer to say the prayer tonight? I will. All right, you're up, Bronson. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful day and all the blessings in life, Lord. God, just keep every one of these cowboys, cowboys and cowgirls safe, safe and uh, and bless us right, bless us right with bull riding. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Bronson. And I am going to um, put Scott's address in the chat. And I will also post it on our Rodeo Kids Ambassador page and the Pony Pro page. So please send thank yous. They mean a lot to everybody. So yeah, Miss Cameron, I wanted to say something real quick. We yeah. have a Bible, we have a Bible app that's free for the kids to download. We also have a fun little card game. I'm just going to give you both of their names. The, the rodeo card game is called rodeojudge.com. You can download that and play a card game that simulates the national finals. But the one that I'm really serious about that's close to my heart, it's called Riding on Course. And you can type that in on your phone at the app store. And it's a, it's a Bible app that will send you scriptures throughout the day. So just get it downloaded and it'll send you one or 50. You can set up how you get them. We're always working on a lot of media behind this behind the scenes. So it's called Writing on Course. You can download our Bible app and it'll bless you. I'm sure it will. Thank you guys so much. Hey, listen, I love you. I hope to meet you in person. I'm going to leave that up to your coordinator and dear friend, Miss Camry. When she asks, we'll be there. And I look forward to meeting you guys in person really soon. And you're doing a great job on the ambassadors for Rodeo Kids. You guys are awesome. And thank you, Scott. We'll definitely be seeing Scott again, right? Everybody game for that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful night.
God bless. Thank bye. you. Bye.